Good morning. We're glad to have you here. If you can stand, would you stand with us as we begin our worship service this morning? seated. I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward at this time. As they do, welcome to the Hibbing Alliance Church. We are here to prayerfully build relationships so that we can impact lives with the transforming power of Jesus Christ for the growth of God's kingdom. One of the things we've discovered of late, and I'm not going to go through the whole announcement again I gave you last time, but we need uh, to begin to retool, revitalize what we're doing to have a greater impact in our community. So I've been asking you to please sign up for a personal assessment on how what motivates you. And then in April, we'll be working together as a congregation and a very fun method of talking about those things and putting us into different groups. And it's really a, a congregational builder of relationships. So thank you. There's 18 of you that have already signed up on the bulletin board by the outside office, by the water fountain. I appreciate very much that you've done that. And for the rest of you, there's still time. We're going to give till March 8th, next Sunday, and then we have to stop taking names because we have to send them into our district office, and then we'll proceed from there by doing an online assessment. If you do not have a computer, if you do not have an email, and I know it seems surprising in this day and age that that would be the case, but some of you don't. And so if you don't, you can use the one at the church. Just set up, come in. When, when we tell you it's time, we'll call you if you're on the list and say, come on in. We're going to have you do this. Take about 20, 30 minutes to process. And then they'll send you us the email that you give, uh, which will probably be the church in this case. And we'll print off the results. And then you bring that with you when you do in April the congregational gathering. So if you are a leader within the church, and that means leader of uh, committees or departments or on the board, if you are a leader especially, we want you to be a part of this because the leaders need to set the course. But if you are not in leadership right now, uh, maybe you want to be in the future, or you're just coming off of a leadership situation, or you're just like, you know what, I, I do care about the church, I want to see it accelerate forward uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ, then please sign up. Okay. Now, it costs $50, and we have people that are donating for those that can't afford it. And so nobody, don't let the finances be the thing that restricts you. We will make that happen so you can take this, because we want as many people as possible from our congregation. 18 is an awesome number. I'm just thrilled that we got that many at this stage. I'd like to see that at least doubled, uh, if possible, or maybe larger. So if you haven't signed up yet, and, in, and you want to be a part of the ground floor on re vitalizing our work for the Lord Jesus Christ, then please sign up on that bulletin board outside the office. Other announcements are in your bulletin. I'm just going to say this real quick. 
so that you, if you're in this department, please read those announcements. Alliance Women, there's an announcement there for you regarding next week. Youth, there's an there's announcement there for the end of the month. And um, we are planning for Easter, Good Friday Easter service. Um, and on Good Friday, we're going to do the Stations of the Cross again. And we're going to set up each station in the gym for a uh, time of prayer and reflection. And it's a little different than we normally do on Good Friday, but we've done this a couple of times now. But we need canopy tents. If you have one that you can donate for that weekend, please let me know. Then we'll set up the different stations in these different locations. And you can come and just be a part of that on Good Friday evening. And then I found out this morning, it is, uh, it is for certain that we have someone to lead the Easter breakfast. Uh, and so we are going to have an Easter morning. Instead of Sunday school, we'll have our Easter breakfast at 930 here at the church, plus, of course, Easter service. Begin to invite your friends, especially those that don't have a church they attend, to join you so that they can hear of the resurrected Lord. That's all the announcements I'm going to share with you at this time. Please read your bulletin later to make sure you're aware of all that's going on, and let's pray together. Father, as we tackle the, for the final time this morning the topic of fear and overcoming it, we know that the enemy wants to do the very opposite, God, of what you want to do. Where you want to grow us and give us confidence in who we are in Christ, he wants to keep us focused on fear and anxiety and despondency. The enemy, Lord, wants to destroy us. God, you want to build us up. So I pray this morning we will keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. I pray that when the enemy, even during this service, tries to distract us with fear or whatever, that in Jesus' name I command him and his demonic host to shut up and go back to the pit of hell where they belong. And pray, God, that we will be able to worship you and hear from you freely without distraction. Speak to us, Lord, what we need to hear, both for ourselves as individuals, but also as a congregation, so that, Lord, we will walk by faith and not by fear. Thank you that we can worship you. Lord, I want to pray especially for the Dags this morning. Of Both of them, I found out today, have influenza A. And, Lord, uh, I just pray for the protection on their health, especially uh, Joyce with the cancer that she's fighting anyway. God, give them strength. And again, we don't live by fear. We trust you, God. You're a God that heals. Prepare us, Lord Jesus, for the communion service as we begin to examine ourselves even now so that we can take of the elements without hesitation. Prepare us, Lord Jesus, as there may be people here that need healing of the body or the mind or the soul or the spirit. That, God, that we will surrender and position ourselves and believe by faith that, God, you can do anything and that you are a God that delivers and restores. So we come before you, Lord, looking with expectation of what you will say to us and how we will encounter you. And thank you, Father, for your presence here. Bless us now as we continue to worship you with offerings and songs and with the word of God. Praise your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Holy Spirit 
mercy as deep cries out to we do here is nothing if your presence isn't with us what we hope for in life Lord Jesus is empty unless God we surrender to you Lord we know that you're the healer but to just believe that and not act on that Father will be a lot less healings that take place when you call us to the fountain Father you ask us to examine ourselves and so Lord as we anticipate at the end of the message communion together let the process of examination begin now Lord speak to us of anything that we might be needing to surrender to you we're talking about fear today and maybe God that's it but it could be something else God let us move in your spirit let us hear from you Lord today let this not be a religious service, but God, let this be a time in which we encounter you, not only for this moment, for our lives this week, that we would be a powerful walking testimony of Jesus Christ before others. Come, Lord Jesus, come. We pray in your name. Amen. You may be seated. We are continuing. If you're just a guest with us for the first time today, we have been going through a um, series called Soul Care, where we've been addressing some of those things in our soul that, that even though we have been redeemed as believers, we have been saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. There may be some scars from our past that have been holding us back from exploring and enjoying all the fullness of God's glory. And so we've been going in the process of looking to see if there's anything there and then addressing it according to God's Word. So for a few months now, we've been examining the health of the redeemed soul. Using Soul Care book by Dr. Rob Reimer as kind of our format, we have been looking at the seven transformational principles of a healthy soul. Our identity is in Christ. We need to start there. Repentance needs to happen when we fail. We must face and purge family sin patterns. Forgiveness is a command and a key to strong spiritual health. We must be forgiving of others. We must press into God for a healing of those wounds we perceive as unhealable, and today we claim victory over our fears, recognizing that they indeed can be overcome. This is crucial as we begin the process of dovetailing this message with the final transformational principle on deliverance. And so I'm just going to give you quick the setup for that. If you've been following along and using the book as a format for yourselves of soul care, we are now in, I believe, the seventh chapter. Uh, we'll begin next week, and that's on deliverance. This is the one aspect, and there's others I'm sure, but the one that even mature believers would rather not engage with. And that is overcoming the enemy by challenging him on his own ground. We're gonna talk about what it means for deliverance, spiritual warfare, exercising demons. All these things are reality of the Christian faith. They still exist in our community. And we're going to talk about how we can claim victory even over those things. And that's why I think our author, Dr. Reimer, put the, the struggle of fear before we get to the struggle of deliverance. Because many people 
even that are mature in their faith, say, you know what, I'm willing to teach Sunday school, I'm willing to lead Bible studies, I'm willing to go serve at food shelves, I'm willing to do those things, but God, please, don't call me into deliverance ministry. That's fear. God said that we have the faith of Jesus Christ, the gates of hell cannot prevail against us. And we're going to talk about that in the next three weeks. So I want to make sure you know that. So as we're going through this study on the, lo- the final study of the three that we've done on fear, that you'll be keeping that in mind and not saying to yourself, I think the best course for me is now to take that vacation I was thinking about taking. Don't run from it. Come and learn from the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? So we're going to look at David's life and spiritual legacy. King David, you remember the man David. You remember him? The biggest thing that stands out is the story of David and Goliath, okay? He takes the, the rock and he kills the lion and the bear. Those are the things that we remember most about David. And then we remember his failure with Bathsheba. And, and, and those are the kind of things he was king, okay? That's kind of the, the quick picture we get of David. I want to remind you of David's life because he faced many fears in life. In David's life, he suffered through many hardships and grief. He lost, as a result of that adulterous affair, he lost to death a baby. He, is a, he has lost a baby boy that was suffering from an adulterous affair. That was grief that he experienced. There were threats that he had to face. He was hunted by an evil king who dedicated his life to killing David just because he was jealous that David was anointed to be the next king. There was violence in David's family. The rape of his daughter by her own half-brother, which would be David's son. And then the murder of that son by his own brother, another of David's sons. You talk about a messed up family? And then there's a rebellion that sent the murdering son into exile. And after a time of three years or more, David's son returns. The murderer returns home only to live as a commoner and not as a prince. And so even though he was jail worthy, he's complaining and becomes jealous of his father's throne. So this left the son angry, bitter, and he proposed to overthrow his father's throne and kill his father. And even when David learned of his son's plan to kill him, he gave orders to protect his son. And yet his son was killed. David knows much heartbreak. In the end, David's son was killed, the rebellion ended, and once again, David was heartbroken. Think about that legacy. We think of the victory of David and Goliath. Yeah, he messed up with Bathsheba. But there's so much more to David's life. And this is but a small portion of the life of David. But you can see that he spent much time in fear for his life, hiding in caves, on the run. How did he survive all of that? This is what I want to land on for us, is because if we have fears in our life, They may not be as bad as David's fear. Or they may be in your mind, your perception of what you've gone through in life. How can we get through those kinds of things? Well, David's answer to fear is, I see it in Psalm 27. And we're just going to go through this point by point. Number one, he was fixed on the Savior. He was focused on on God. The thing that he knew he needed help from, he was going to get from God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? With all this stuff going on, God, focused on him, who shall I fear? The Lord's the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? Whom shall I be afraid? Now understand, David was a real flesh and blood person of history. When he was on the run from Saul and from Absalom, when he was, his life was being threatened on different occasions, not only by people he knew or his family members, even, but also the enemies of Israel, the threat of death again and again and again was real for him. 
And he writes in Psalm 27, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? What is he saying? I'm under the divine providence of God. The Lord is my defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? He had faith in the Savior. When evildoers came upon him to devour my flesh, he says, when evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamped against me, my f- heart will not fear. Though war rise, arise against me, in spite of this, I shall be confident. Do you remember the story of David and Goliath? You remember Saul, the king that was heads and shoulders over everybody else, was in his tent, wringing his hands, saying, Woe is me, I am undone. None of my soldiers want to go out and take on the giant. And in comes a shepherd boy. He says, Let me at him. David had a faith to believe that God could do the impossible. Now, if David just focused on the size of the giant and he rationalized that all these trained soldiers are afraid to take on this dude, he might have said, probably not a good idea to go out there with a slingshot. But instead, he said, he's already defeated in God's eyes. He did not look at the size of the giant. He looked at the size of God and said, that guy has no chance. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He had faith in his Savior. He had solitude with the Savior. Verse 4, it said, One thing I asked from the Lord, that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to meditate in his temple. Listen, this thing that David had, this relationship with God, didn't just happen because he was, he was chosen to be the next king. He had a heart for God. When he was out watching sheep and he was just a little shepherd boy, he was playing this harp, he was singing to the Lord. He trusted God when the bear came against the sheep. He trusted God when the lion came against the sheep. He had no idea he was going to have to take on a human being. He truly believed what he had learned about God. And that's because he spent time alone with God. And he says, and I want to be there. That's where I want to be. That's where my source comes from. I want to be in the presence. I want to be in solitude. I want to be in silence. I want to be in the presence of God. In our generation today, in our culture, we, when we talk about being in the presence of God, we go, hey, Sunday's coming, church is coming, let's go. That's not, I mean, it is, collectively, but God wants us there every day. God wants to slow down. God wants us to spend time alone, loving, and worshiping, and fixed on Him. When that happens, then we begin to trust in the Savior more fully. Verse 5 says, For in the day of trouble He concealed me in His tabernacle, In the secret place of his tent, he will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock, and now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. What is that description? I trust God, and when I'm in the presence of God, he surrounds me. He seals me in his temple. He lifts me up, so I'm above all that turmoil and all that issue of fear and all the issues of anxiety that's going to come by what's going on in my life. And my head will be lifted up above my enemies. I will be able to defeat anyone or anything that comes my way when I trust God. He rejoices to the Savior. And he says, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I don't know what the sacrifices were other than the real temple sacrifices, but he says, when I'm alone with God, I'm going to sacrifice to him. Maybe for us, that's a sacrifice just of time, to spend time alone with God, to worship him, to praise him, to honor him, to listen to him. 
that we, we carve out on purpose, this is my God time. There is no one or no thing more important than my God time. Now, if I was to ask you and interview all of you right now and say, raise your hand, how many think that God's the most important thing that should be in your life? Every one of you would raise your hand. And yet, what we do with our God time determines whether or not we actually act upon that belief. And if we're not spending God time, then we're truly not putting God first. And David said, this is what gives me strength. When I spend God time and rejoice with him and sacrifice my time or my money or my, or, or my, or my counsel with other people or my work time or whatever it is, I need time with the Lord, my God time. I can sing praises to him and be in his presence and offer prayers to the Savior. And he does this in verse 7. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, be gracious to me and answer me. And when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, O Lord, I shall seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not abandon me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. What was the relationship here? He says that he cries unto the Lord, be gracious to me and answer me. And he says, and when you say to me, seek my face, when you say to me, I need God time, his response is, I'm there. It's not an option for me. I need to be there. For all that's going on in my life, I cannot deal with it alone. I need time alone with God. And when there's prayers and there's rejoicing and praise, there's also needs to be time of study with this, for the Savior. He writes in verse 10, For my father and my mother have forsaken me. In other words, they've died. But the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a level path because of my foes. Teach me. That means I am a student and you are the teacher. Where, where do we learn the most about God? It's in relationship with Him, but how do we know how we're supposed to live? How do we know what God's holiness is like? How do we know what it means to have the character of Christ? How do we know what tools are available to defeat the enemy? It's in God's Word from Genesis to Revelation. Interesting, in the, in the, in the little video clip we watched this morning in Sunday school class, Dr. Reimer said that when we talk about the Scriptures are, are under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, okay? All Scripture is inspired, Timothy tells us. That is not, it is inspired simply for the writers to write down what God wanted to say. He says it is inspired every time we read it, we should be anticipating an encounter with God because it's power, it's truth. It's not just information. So do we Ask God, teach me from your word. Do we study the word to learn from God and how to live? He said, this is one of the steps that he has overcoming his fear. The Lord's my salvation, my light, my salvation. Whom do I fear? These are the things that I go through in order not to live in fear, but to live in faith and strength. And he talks about protection from uh, received from the Savior. Do not deliver me over to the desire of my adversaries. For false witnesses have been ris risen against me, and such as breath, breathe out violence, would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We receive protection from the Savior. David says, there are people, false witnesses, they're lying about me. Have you ever had anybody lie about you? Have you had anybody disappoint you? Have you had anybody that you felt was a loyal friend, or all of a sudden they did something or said something that was totally opposite, and you felt they betrayed you? And that's what David's talking about. I've had people say false things against me, I've had to go run and hide in caves. There's all these things that are going on, and he writes and says, my protection, though, against all these things is the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living, I trust God. I believe that he'll walk me through this. 
And so what is his final instruction? Wait on the Lord. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. And again, in our, in our day and age, and it's, not, it's, it's different, but it, some of the things are probably the same in terms of how we deal with this. But to wait on the Lord means to wait on the Lord. What we want when we're looking to God is a quick fix. God, I'm not feeling good. Please heal me. Now would be preferable. God, I got financial issues. Please take care of those. Now would be nice. We run to the mailbox, hoping there's a check in there. God, all these things are going on in my life. I'm not waiting for you as much as I'm expecting you're going to answer my prayer because I'm a consumer, God. And I need to consume these answers right now. God says, I, I want relationship with you. And that takes time. You need to nurture it. You need to be in my presence. You need to know who I am. And if you're having difficulty, then time together is the best answer. That means pushing other things aside and making me the center and the focus of your life. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. Nice thing about the, the notes this time, this was a pretty easy sermon to craft because he put it all there for us. I just had to write in the headings, okay? But again, we can go from knowledge to action on these things that we, we see in front of us. You Not yet. <laughs> But we're going to do that in a minute. We're going to come to the table of the Lord. We're going to do something a little bit different this time. Our worship team is, is this time is with you, which is nice. Um, we, as a congregation, we're going to do this together. We're going to take communion together. But uh, what, what, there's a couple of things I want to give you these instructions, okay? Number one, as we come to the table of the Lord, we're talking today about fighting fear and living in faith. So... As this song that is going to be played in a few moments is playing, the, uh, the uh, servers are going to serve you the elements. Do not take the elements until you're instructed to do so. But the bread will come first and the cup will come right afterwards, okay? Hold those. Listen to the music. Listen to the song about that we're no longer slaves to fear. But then be asking God, Lord, what are the fears of my life? What are the things that still keep me in chains the things that I don't really trust you with before I take communion I want to know what those are so that I can surrender those and confess those and ask you God to remove those from my life so as our servers I'm going to ask you to come forward now as you're being served this morning and as that song's being played please remain seated and just be praying and seeking God about any fear that may be in your life. And turn it over to him today. It's his, this is your turn to say, God, I want to be like David. You're the light of my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I'm going to spend time in your presence. Gather in front. We haven't served so long they don't even know where to stand anymore. Okay, just come stand right in front here because I'm going to serve you in a second. But this is your hour, this is your moment to be able to turn over that fear that may be perceived you could never turn over to God or that it's just something you have to live with. I'm here to tell you something. God can deliver anyone from anything at any time. And if you believe the lie of the enemy that says, nope, that's going to be a part of your life the rest of your life, then you will live in that misery the rest of your life. But you can trust God to deliver you and he says, wait on me. Now this morning when we had the video, our, our instructor, the 10-minute instructions we looked at, Dr. Reimer said that he was fighting some anxiety in his life. This was long after he wrote the book, long after he's been teaching these materials. And he said he was taking time to be alone with the Lord for three days. And he found out on the third day what he had to deal with. And, it was, and he dealt with it for three months and caught, until God removed it from him. But what it did was it drove him to have quiet time with God 
multiple times every day for three months. God wants relationships with us. He wants time with us. And sometimes our suffering, sometimes our fear are to pull us closer to the Lord. But don't live in the fear. Live to believe by faith that God can do anything. Because he can't. Once we're done with this, we're going to have the worship team come up and sing one final song. And you're going to be invited, if you want, to go back to the back room back here and ask people to pray over you for divine healing of whatever it is that you might be grappling with. But for now, let's pray. And then this song will start and we'll pass out the elements. Again, please don't consume them until I give you instructions to do so. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I'm excited about this because, Lord, there, there are things in our lives that give us angst, anxiety, health issues, financial issues, Lord Jesus, even our own character issues. Sometimes we don't feel worthy. All of those are things of God that you can deliver us through and from. If there's anyone here today, Lord, that's struggling with a fear, that the enemy has put them in bondage to a fear, that today would be the day of deliverance because they surrender it to you. And then seal that surrender with communion. Come, Lord Jesus, and bring your deliverance upon those who are dealing with some issues that they need to give to you today. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can start. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Change. 
child of God? Do you believe in what Jesus can do for you to deliver you from all fear, all anxiety, all sickness, all suffering, all peril? No matter what goes on in our life, God says, come unto me, all who are burdened and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. We may have to go through some things that are not that pleasant, but God says, I'll be with you through the whole process. Trust me in this. Spend time with me. Know me and know my love for you. David wrote another psalm that I want to read for you just before we take the elements. It's one that's very familiar, and in a moment we're going to pray it together, but let me just read it to you first. It's called the 23rd Psalm. He said, The Lord is my shepherd, and I lack nothing. Now, we normally read it, I shall not want, and it can be confused with, well, why would we say that after we say he's my shepherd, I do not want? It's not I do not want. It means I lack nothing. God's my shepherd. God takes care of me. I don't lack anything. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. In other words, he brings to me the nutrients and the, and the refreshment that I need to survive. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For his rod and his staff, they comfort me. The rod was the weapon of protection of a shepherd against any predator, against the sheep. The staff was to guide them to where they need to go. God, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and my cup overflows. You get the imagery of that picture that we're sitting at the table of the Lord. Right now, we are having together at the table of the Lord communion, and we are in the very presence. The enemy is all around us. The world is calling for the church to get out of its life. The world is saying God doesn't exist, or if he does, leave us alone. The enemy's trying to destroy the church across the globe. Of course, Jesus says, my church will be here forever. But God has prepared us a table in the midst of all of our enemies and says, surely goodness and mercy, loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will be with God forever. So we are at the table of the Lord today, the Lord's table. We are to take the bread that represents his body that was broken for us. It was bruised for our iniquities. By his stripes we can receive healing, not only of the soul, but of the body, the mind, the strength. And the cup is the cup of Jesus Christ. It is, it is the blood, represents the blood that was shed on Calvary to pay for the penalty of your sins and my sins and all the sins of humanity from all time. 
And when we accept Christ and his forgiveness, and we surrender to Jesus as our Savior and our Master, we're adopted into his family. And so we eat the bread and we drink the cup to proclaim that and to remind us of his sacrifice for us and our strength is in him. So let's eat and drink together. Thank you, Jesus, for your love for us that while we were still sinners, you were willing to die for us, and you did. But the death, the grave could not keep you. Death, it couldn't hold you. And so you are our risen Lord, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving, all-holy, and you call for us to walk in the belief of who you are and to trust you through the lie, things that we experience here in a world that is cursed with sin. So God, thank you for our salvation and thank you that we can anticipate by faith healing of the body, soul, mind, and strength. So as we close this part of the service, I'm going to ask that our worship team come forward, and I'm going to ask that we would pray together. You have to look up. If, uh, you probably all know this, but you want to look up. It's up here on the screen, the Lord's Prayer. And make this your prayer, even though it's the prayer of David. Make it your prayer this morning. Let's pray together. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 As we sing this final song together, if you would like prayers of healing, please go in the prayer room back in the corner here. Our elders and deacons and deaconesses will join you there to pray with you. And whatever you're seeking God for, we will pray and believe with you for that healing. Let's stand together. And if you want prayer, please go back in that room during this song.
truly do believe that. We truly do. God, bring healing to those who are calling for it right now. Be with us, Lord Jesus, that we would be in prayer support of them and for one another. And let us walk this week, Lord Jesus, no matter what the world throws at us, that we will walk by faith and not by fear, and that we'll truly press into you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. Go in God's peace. Thank you.